In this video, we are going to talk about laser technology. Lasers have been a hallmark in sci-fi movies. We have seen heroes carry those lightsabers, which are nothing but high-powered lasers. Lasers have a wide range of applications in technology, such as optical communications and barcode sensors. So how does a laser work and what is it good for? Answering this question is the goal of this video. Without delving into mathematical details of quantum electronics, let's examine how lasers work as well as their applications. The word laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. In layman terms, laser is nothing more than a special flashlight, a flashlight that has quite interesting properties. Let's study some characteristic of laser that differentiate laser from light from other sources. One unique characteristic of laser light is its purity. Light produced by a laser is exactly same color or monochromatic. Because a glass prism is dispersive, it separates lights into component colors. If a red light from a particular source is made to fall on prism, it disperses into a band of wavelength comprising deep red and light red colors. But a prism does not have quite that effect on laser light. This is because laser have very small bandwidth as compared to light from other sources. Laser light has a strong sense of directionality. A laser beam can traverse hundreds of miles without expanding very much. Divergences of lasers are usually measured in the order of milliradians, although lasers do have some divergence. Lasers that emerge from resonators usually make many round trips of the resonator before emerging through a mirror. This causes a small bit of divergence in the laser light as shown. Directionality is one of the reasons that the intensity of laser light is quite high. Characteristic of directionality coupled with monochromaticity along with the phase consistency is described by the term coherence. In this figure, two waves of laser beams are shown. They illustrate the unique characteristic of laser light. Firstly, they have nearly same wavelength. Second, they have nearly same direction. And lastly, they have same phase. Coherence is the property that distinguishes laser from other type of light. Before understanding the working of laser, let's first look at the concept of spontaneous emission. There are several ways an atom in an excited state can lose energy. The energy can be transferred to other atoms or it can be released as heat or light. If light is emitted, wavelength of the emitted light corresponds to the energy lost by the atom. So what is spontaneous emission? A photon is absorbed, which transfers the atom from ground state to excited state. Atom stays in this state for a period called a spontaneous lifetime. Eventually, atom emits the photon and returns to its ground state. The photon is emitted in a random direction. Now, what do we understand by stimulated emission? The process of stimulated emission is shown. A second photon, one with the same energy as the absorbed first photon, interact with the excited atom and stimulate it to emit a photon. This second photon is not absorbed by the atom, but its presence causes the atom to emit a photon. This light is emitted in the same direction as the stimulating photon. Since stimulating photon has same energy as emitted photon, emitted light has same wavelength as the stimulating light. Polarization is also same for both the rays as well as the phase is same, interestingly. This emission can take place long before spontaneous lifetime has passed. Let's examine the behavior of a collection of atoms and look at how energy in a collection of atoms is divided among individual atoms. Consider a jar containing 100 atoms of the same element. Then how many atoms are in ground state and how many are in excited state? Let's consider thermal energy in the jar. The more thermal energy in the jar, the higher the temperature will be. Some of this thermal energy shows up in the kinetic energy of atoms, while some of it shows up in electronic energy levels of the atoms. Some atoms are excited to higher energy states while some remain in the ground state. Boltzmann's law is one of the fundamental law of thermodynamics. 
It tells us about the population of each energy level if all the atoms are in thermal equilibrium. To the left, you can see Boltzmann distribution when the jar is in thermal equilibrium. What happened to this distribution when you add energy to it? Well, its temperature rises and the distribution changes from left figure to the right figure. Now, there are fewer atoms in low lying energy level and some of previously empty levels are now populated. But one thing that is still valid is no energy level has population greater than any level below it. As long as atoms are in thermal equilibrium, energy will be partitioned among them according to Boltzmann's law. But we can create a state of thermal non-equilibrium. It will only last for a short while but nevertheless it will. In the left figure, let's say you have somehow removed 7 atoms out of the jar, then we can have a distribution like this. This figure shows population inversion between states E1 and E0 because there are more atoms in E1 state than in E0 state. Another way of creating inversion is if you add energy to the jar, not random energy but energy in very precise amount. Suppose you took an electron gun and shoot a beam of electrons each electron having same velocity as all other electrons. When one of these electrons collides with an atom in the jar, if the energy of electron is same as the difference in energy levels between E2 and E3, then if this electron collides with atom in E2 level, the atom will get excited to E3 level. If frequency of the shooting of electrons is fast enough, atoms can be pumped to E3 level faster than they will decay to E2 level. This will create a population inversion between E2 and E3 level, though these inversion levels will not last very long. We have discussed stimulated emission and population inversion. These are the fundamental principles of laser working. Let us go back to our jar. Let's say that this jar contains only one atom at E0 level. Now, suppose a photon is incident whose energy equal the energy difference between state E2 and E0, then this photon is absorbed and the atom is excited to E2 state. Now, let's say the atom was in E2 state. What happens if that same, same photon interacts with the atom? Because the energy is exactly correct, the photon can stimulate the excited atom to emit a photon. The atom comes back to E0 level and the two photons depart in the same direction and in phase with each other. Now put all 100 atoms back into the jar. Let's say all atoms are in ground state. Three photons come along each having correct wavelength then all three of them will be absorbed leaving 97 atoms in ground state and three atoms in E2 state. Next let us have 50 atoms in E2 state and 50 atoms in ground state. When three photons come along there is a 50-50 chance of interacting with an excited atom and 50-50 chance of interacting with ground state atom. If the photon interacts with excited atom, it will stimulate the atom to emit. If it interacts with ground state atom, photon will be absorbed. For every photon created by stimulated emission, another photon disappears by absorption. Number of photons departing the jar is same as number of photons entering it. Lastly, let's say all atoms are in E2 state. When three photons come along, each of them will stimulate an atom to emit and number of photons leaving the jar will be greater than the number of jars that have entered. This is all there is to laser. The bigger the population inversion, the bigger the amplification. Lasers have wide range of application. One of the more exciting application is in the field of telecommunication in which tiny diode lasers generate optical signal transmitted through optical fibers. In medicine, laser's narrow beam is powerful tool for therapy. A CO2 laser has been used as bloodless scalpel because beam comprises the incision as it is made. Lasers are used in barcode scanners in grocery stores. Lasers scan the barcode pattern automatically reading it into store's computer. Laser gyroscopes are used to guide commercial aircrafts. So we see Laser has many utilitarian properties and can be employed for many practical purposes. So this was it for today. If you guys any have any problem, comment down below.